December 4th, 2023, meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'll call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the Redevelopment Board, and I'll ask the other members of the board to please introduce themselves. Uh, Steve Rebel, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shane Colton Houston. Jen Lau. And we have uh, Claire Ricker, the uh, director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, joining us this evening as well. Great, let's uh, jump into our first agenda item, which is uh, agenda item number one, the meeting minutes from November 20th, 2023. I will um, see if there are any changes or corrections to the minutes, starting with Ken. No. Uh, Steve? No changes. Jean? No changes. Shana? No. And I don't have any either. Is there a motion to approve the Meeting minutes from November 20th, 2023, as submitted. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Ken. Yes. Shana. Yes. Jean. Yes. And I'm the yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. Uh, we'll now move to agenda item number two, which is consideration of a citizen warrant article. Um, we welcome John Leone uh, this evening, who is interested in discussing with the Board of Rezoning of 5 to 7 Winter Street to be in the MBTA Communities Overlay District, and I believe that there is a discussion around which of the two districts, perhaps, well, or is it the neighborhood multi-district? I think it would be more appropriate to the neighborhood multi-district. Okay. Well, why don't you, uh, Claire, unless you have any introduction that you'd like to make? Sure, just really um, quickly for the board. Maurice put this drawing together for us this afternoon, which um, I think really tells the story here. In gray, you can see the neighborhood multifamily um, as was submitted to uh, EOHLC and the Attorney General's office. This is what town meeting voted on. And here is um, Mr. Leone's parcel. Um, this parcel was likely removed when, we were, when the board had the conversation about um, potentially um, leaving some of the immediate par the parcels immediately behind um, commercial um, development on Mass Ave, um, you know, potentially anticipating some aggregation. Um, this was one of the parcels that was uh, under, uh, that was removed either as part of that process or because it was on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, when we looked at alternate two, which is ultimately what the board went with um, in terms of the overlay uh, for the entire MBTA communities, we started to look um, sort of to the um, north I guess west of Mass Ave and um, includes an area around Schwan Hill. There was concern um, in the community uh, about historic properties that may be included in the overlay and so we did make a call to try to as many of the properties as we could identify from the data um, that were on the National Register to not include those in the district um, and that's really the background I think um, in terms of from where the department is. Great, thank you very much. Mr. So this, this is not my, not my house, it's my family's house. My grandparents bought this property in 1957, 56, and we've maintained it ever since. They've lived there until they passed, and family members have been living there. And for the last 10 or 12 years, we've had a, we rented out the first floor to a um, single mom, um, who's basically, you know, had to get rid of her. Um, but as you can see, the house, it's a very large parcel for Arlington. It's, I think it's around 18,000 square feet. Um, it's been on the National Historic Register since before, but so has number 13, um, which was introduced to the register during the same um, introduction phase. And I don't know how many others are brought in the district. Um, it's kind of hard to track them down. I don't really have a good read on what is and what isn't besides going through the register and picking up all the houses. So I, I don't think that should be a reason to exclude our house. Um, this, the property itself, obviously, because it's on the district, we couldn't do anything to it unless we came before one of the store commissions or somebody thought commission. Not that we have any uh, plans to do anything to the building. Um, you know, we have maintained the matter that we put in the roof on it. So we're not letting things fall into ruin in the hopes of knocking it down. That's not our plan. We want to preserve all our options. The size of the lot, and you talk about aggregation, there's 
<coughs> we have the single row of storefronts here. Uh, they may want to um, take advantage of the Mass Ave district and go up. That might cause them to possibly be interested in this part of the lot, which wouldn't touch the house structure itself, but would allow them to use that for different different needs to build there, or we could expand the house backwards um, and not touch the front or the two front sides and add on to the back of the house for additional housing. So we want to, and that was the reason I did bring the Warren article it itself, is included in just to preserve those options in the future. Otherwise, we have the potential to literally be surrounded by everybody around us um, well, the library, maybe the town wants to do something someday, I don't know. If all of those build up, we'll be this little lone house within a whole bunch of six to four to six story buildings. And um, it would be kind of sad to waste that first. So that's what our goal is, just to preserve any options in the future. Um, I'm one of six children. Um, we all think this is something we want to preserve, um, go forward with. So I'm going to bring the Warren article, but you know, my preference would be for you guys to go or to adopt that Warren article. So, um, I mean, we, I'm not quite sure it said why we were excluded in, in the first round, whether it was on purpose or by a mistake or what happened. Um, I think the neighborhood district would be more appropriate than the Mass Ave district. Because it, unless the storefronts wanted to do something, but um, there's a couple different owners of those storefronts. This is owned by one person, one family. These are owned by, I think these three four are owned by a different family. So it's not a cohesive owner of that whole lot of stores. But they're, they're back if their building is literally on the property. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of extra room there. So that's kind of what we're doing. And I wanted to, before I go down this path, and Warren does open, I believe, in a week or so. Um, so when we went down that path, we wanted to kind of see if the board had any thoughts or um, feelings about it. Absolutely. Um, maybe I'll start and then we can, you know, each kind of give you our yeah. uh, sense because we, we did have a um, really truncated discussion of, about this. We didn't have much opportunity for the um, town meet, special town meeting this, mm -hmm. this fall to, to have a discussion about the citizen petitions that, that right. came forward. Um, so um, the property was removed because of the fact that it was on the national um, register. Mm -hmm. um, we had, the board had requested in response to community feedback um, and the board's own preference for all projects that are on the national register to be removed. If one was not, that was in error. That was the direction of the of the board was to have them, them all removed. So at the time, um, it was our preference not to spot um, by allowing one here and not, and not there, the the intent was to remove all of all of those particular properties with the opportunity, obviously, in the in the future, for anyone in town could, can request uh, a zoning change at, at any time. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that this is absolutely a, a great time to be discussing this. Um, I agree with you. I think that um, the neighborhood subdistrict makes the, the most sense mm -hmm. as opposed to the Mass Ave and Broadway subdistrict. Um, I personally, for when, when an applicant is looking to rezone their property, I personally prefer that it remain a citizen petition rather than a, a board sponsor, but it doesn't mean that the board wouldn't potentially in the future vote in not voted in favor of it so um that would personally be my preference but um 
that's kind of a high level of my, my initial thoughts about the liberty table versus the last one. Uh, I agree with Rachel. Uh, the, the intent when we first did this was not single you out, but the, uh, it was to exclude all historic structures. And if we had this. National Register, not the. Yeah, the National Register. Register. Yeah. And if we missed 13, <coughs> we missed 13. It was um, quite a frenzy at the time trying to figure out all properties out there. We have to go back and correct ourselves if we have to do that. Um, but um, when your article did come back up to us, we were, I believe, we were supportive of your of your work article. And not at the time. We were. We 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 indicated that we would be if we came back as a citizen okay. petition, yes. but not as uh, an individual spot amendment. Zone. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and I agree, Rachel. We totally don't like the spot zone as a board. Mm -hmm. uh, we recommend make a change and I would I as a board member would be supportive of that uh, of that spot change because we could make a great argument and it is does make sense. Yeah. Um, I might go as far as uh, it could go either way. It could, it, it could be zoned with Mass Ave and that would that would although don't forget in front of this one we excluded those because those are part of the um, yeah I'm not, East Arlington. I, I, I want to say it would yeah, yeah. be part of uh, that that rezoning later on with with, with Mass Ave because uh, uh, those shops are very shallow, <coughs> uh, very very non compliant unless they have some room behind what you have. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, it's a natural uh, potential, you know. To, uh, to include your property with those uh, along Mass Ave, and you know, if, even if uh, the building still wants to remain in historic, it can be moved. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, you are basically landlocking those those pro uh, those projects out there, and they will never go anywhere. And that's one of the issues we have right now uh, with some of our uh, commercial space along Mass Ave. So, um, I would be supportive of you going the other way if us, the neighborhood, were just doing a long mass app. And that may be something that we can find later on. Hmm. Uh, when we do mass app, there's, there's many opportunities uh, I think for you because of the location where you're at. Uh, and, the, and the size of the parcel, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but your, your parcel is a little bit on the landlocked side, but yes, mm -hmm. it is. Uh, it's it be it's very hard to uh, uh, fit something new in that dog leg. Right. Uh, it would have to be uh, grandfathered for that for that uh, for footprint of that dog leg. But that open space there is just definitely right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the dog leg may become the open space. I'm not sure. But, yeah. yeah. Frankly, the barn, even though it would be outside, it's that's weird. <laughs> you, the floor is on, on locust post. I don't think there's that many bars left in Arlington, is there? No, not a done size. Uh, I remember looking at that uh, when we were at the library and I looked at that thing. It's quite huge. I mean, it's, it's back in the day when that was, when this was farmland, right? This house originally was here, facing that cell. Okay. And they moved, they picked it up, moved it, and then sold the front off. Okay. And so that's, and we had a um, circular drive going back to the barn from Mass Ave. We did a um, history house and had it researched. Okay. And we moved it, I think, before 1920. And they laid the source. At that point, it had been moved. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just. I'd be supportive of uh, whatever you guys decide, but it would definitely recommend going with a citizen partition, right. not a board decision for one block. Mm -hmm. Jane? Hi. Hi. I can it seems like a very appropriate um, parcel for, for the district to um, have. Uh, we supported um, citizen. Okay. Um, 
I would too, but I'll tell you how I did. Excuse me. I recommended no the town meeting and voted no because I felt the last moment that you can do was too soon. There was no outreach to the neighbors. And that would be a shame. And that would have to be done. And at least some outreach to the historical commission ahead of time. So I felt that without that, it was premature. As I don't want to be to to come to town meeting. Um, I was under the impression that all the historical, or all the buildings on the National Register were excluded from the jury supplies. My information that all of them were not, so that could that change as well. But I think that that is also. Um, the other thing I'll just mention is we will at some point rezone that part of the museum probably in two or three years. Um, if we put those parcels that face the museum into the mass and overlay district, which will have to go to town meeting under the under the Bible that was just passed, if one of those were to purchase or a part of the parcel, it would go into the Mesa district <coughs> if they wanted to. So you wouldn't have to rezone no. for the Mesa district. You could do the neighborhood of the district because the, what, where we ended up with was if a parcel were in both districts or one parcel back from the Mesa or Broadway, it would be in the Mesa. So we, we wouldn't need to make that decision now. I think we could if we would recommend that it go into the district. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be supportive, but we would have to work with the neighbors and consider all the neighbors that have gone in or been added. I would assume that they want to change. Also, happy to the historical commission to see what they have to see. Um, I'm just curious, your family in the property that got onto the National Register, what was your family's role? Nothing. Nothing. We didn't, I don't know, um, just kind of happened. We didn't, we didn't, back in 84, um, I don't remember having any family discussion at that point about it. Uh, Grandparents would have passed. My father at that point didn't object because we could live back. This is our house, and at that point, family members were living there. So, your father was a lawyer, so yeah. you had some idea. Yeah, yeah there, there was some idea what was happening, but it was sort of one of those things. They're bringing in these 70 or 80 parcels, and they're one of them. It was kind of a mass um, introduction into the National Historic Register. Do you know if your house is also on the town's inventory? Or is it Joanne will tell us? No, Joanne, when she has her chance. Yeah. Not now. Not that I'll even she has her chance. I think it may be. Sure, it is. It's on the National Historic well, Register. Not every, not every, I'm proud that not every property that's on the National Historic Register. I don't know. But, you know, subject to the neighbors and the historical commission outreach, um, yeah, I'm probably in the third place too. You should take a look at um, the zoning body because it requires you to be registered and certified in order to be a voter and to be as part of the process. So don't forget that. So go ahead. If you want, I can um, email you the exact site and I'll check it out. And I think Claire, the department can, can help Mr. Bush with understanding what the outreach oh, is, correct? Absolutely. Sure. Perfect. That's it. Thanks.
great community. Yeah. I'm, I'm also supportive of uh, including the inclusion of that property in the neighborhood multifamily district. Um, noting that, you know, what's immediately to the southwest is a, a strip of, a, a fairly narrow strip of the three parcels. Um, you know, I would also be willing to entertain, say, a concurrent different zoning, zoning, changing the base zoning to the three. Yeah. With, this may change, as, as Mr. Benson said, this may change um, in a few years, but in terms of um, having flexibility to allow some of those commercial properties to expand rearward in the you know, in the future, you know, it may be something you'd want to consider. Okay. Any other thoughts before we move on? Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so Absolutely. Uh, anyone uh, do we have I can to just tell you a piece of about I'm sorry, if you could just introduce yourself for the for the record. Thank you. Sorry. Um I'm the chair of the um uh Western Health Commission of Silver Savings and uh it was in the nineteen eighties, that's when these were put on the register and I think that's in the uh, uh document that you've had. <laughs> You know, I, I found out about this this morning. Uh, I just wanted to come over and say that, you know, uh, one of the things that I particularly would like to see is that if the houses um, could be, you know, retained and revamped for some use, like your, you know, the original idea for your work, that's something we could support because we feel that you know, these are big houses, they could be reused. And so, you know, that's my perspective on this kind of thing. Um, and I can provide a list of, I think there were some other mistakes, I just thought I'd come down here in terms of which ones are actual national register and things that aren't. Some of them are very important use of the uh, houses that were built for the uh, select people who were running the town at that time. And um, I can tell you a little bit about that history, but I wouldn't make it at that time. Great, thank you. Uh, and I think you make a, a good point around the fact that um, putting or asking the town to approve changing the zoning to the neighborhood uh, the neighborhood subdistrict does not necessarily identify what, how specifically this would be right. redeveloped and to uh, well, Robinson's point right there are multiple <laughs> ways of retaining the existing structure yeah. exactly exactly carrot house is also in the natural yeah. this now just the house itself. That's the carriage house. I was looking at the materials you put on. That's a piece on the property, and so the property, you know, all the buildings on that piece of property are in the district. Hmm. So that's the way it works. I, I just thought I'd come and send you two things. Thank you, that's helpful. Here are some of your outreach now also yeah, to the historic yeah. membership. So um, would anyone else like to speak this evening? Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so we'll close public comment and um, it, it sounds like unless you have any other questions that the board is generally yeah. supportive. Mm -hmm. Obviously we'll, um, you know, if you decide to move forward with the citizen petition, we will hold a full hearing um, once that is um, identified um, as as an article that will go forward for the, the warrant. Um, but barring anything unforeseen, it, it sounds like you know, both the board has, uh, anything else you'd like to share as if the board is supportive of okay. this? Appreciate it. Yeah, we've got it before as well. Okay, great. It just makes more sense to do what things are not. Great. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is that one of the ones that you were considering? Yeah, no, it was, I was not, I was not, I didn't know what it was in. It would be in the neighborhood. Yeah.
the district. Okay. Residential. Yes. Okay. since the sidewalk <coughs> was updated about three or four years ago. But if you take a close read, it says administrative approval start sign modifications on properties subject to environmental design review may be considered for administrative approval. So that seems to be only if there are sign modifications and then it gives you the answer. So um, the only way um, we could approve, yeah. the department can approve the agreement it's signed if it's a signed modification and it's the same elimination as for the existing sign, Correct. which is not internally illuminated. So other than that, it sort of seems to me that the department, most of the sign permits would need to come to us unless we want to amend the rules and regulations to give more authority to the department than it has on the front um, Is there a specific suggestion related to that that you would like to um, propose? I, I mean, I haven't talked to Claire about it before. I don't know what your thinking is on how much you decide what you would want to have the administrative approval. I think it's a it, it, it's an interesting question, and it's one that um, you know obviously it's it's um, it's up to the team. Um, we have it, it's it's a uh, it has been a, a, a little bit of a, a balance, you know, a little tricky to balance. You know, what is um, so minor that I don't want to necessarily put it in front of the board, um, and what is that you know to burden the board or the applicant? Yeah, to burden the board or the applicant. You know, it is a five hundred dollar application. Um, you know, and there are times when the modification is pretty uh, minor. Um, you know, whether we're going from a, uh, a non illuminated non illuminated sign to an illuminated sign, you know, something like that. When the illuminated sign meets all the other um, requirements of the zoning, um, there's that one, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, stick in there, which is that it's, we're going from a non illuminated sign to an illuminated sign. This is something. That, like to see. So I think, like you know, I hate to sort of volume this back and forth, but you know, how detailed and how much time does the board want to spend on those types of signs to meet the letter of the sign um, by law? Um, I mean, I'm more than happy to put every sign I get, uh, you know, in, in potentially in front of the board if that's what you, you know, if that's what you would like to have happen. Um, but it does seem like if it's it's worked, I, I would say that the work that Maurice has done. And, you know, um, Katie now, um, this is under the auspices of the economic development director. Um, she generally um, starts with the review of the sign, but if she has questions, you know, obviously comes to me and goes to her. But, 
um, but generally we have um, tried to stay within the you know, constraints of the sign uh, bylaw as much as we can without bringing things that are involving a road to the manager, potentially going from a goose neck elimination to a with all other conditions in that. So I guess my question is, if the way I read this, any new sign, not a modification, could not be subject to administrative review. And so my question is, should we broaden this so that the only signs that cannot be administrative review are the signs that don't meet the height, width, etc. Right, right. You know, that don't meet one of the requirements where the board is the authority to weigh or adjust any of the requirements. Because right now this is very narrow. If there were, you know, a new building built, you wouldn't have the authority no. to, to administratively approve a sign, even if the sign met all of the standards. So that's, do we want it, and it brings us to you and the board, do we want to make this broader so that the department can approve administratively any sign that complies with the current rules? Or do we still want to leave it to just sign Great question. Steve, you want to start? Sure. Um, I would be, you know, it, it, uh, it depends on how this uh, the director feels, but I would be okay with um, moving administrative review for things that comply with the, you know, the letter of the requirements mm -hmm. in the building bylaw and saving our role for when applicants want to go beyond that. Um, you know, I, I also think there's you know, maybe we want to have a discussion about uh, whether um, bullet items number five and six of rule 18. Um, you know, requiring the same illumination or not internally, not internally illuminated. Um, you know whether we want to continue to keep that in place as well. Thanks, Sheila. Um, <clears throat> Actually reserving the right of the board to review things that are a few locations or high profile signs when they were considered. Um, I agree. I think that the word may be considered uh, allows for some of that flexibility. In fact, we had a set of signage that came in front of us um, recently that was marginally in compliance and because of the fact that there were multiple signs on the, on the building the, the um, department did elect to bring those in front of the board so that we could have a discussion which I appreciated so I think that um, that particular modifier may gives the department a certain amount of flexibility there and I agree with Steve that um, removing the um, criteria that specifically speaks to illumination, um, whether it's an illuminated sign or a non-illuminated sign, I believe that the signage bylaw is um, suitably prescriptive in terms of which, what types of illumination uh, are allowed. And if uh, it meets those and the other criteria, and again, the planning department uh, feels that they have the, the bandwidth to review and that it's not in a location where they feel that it's important for the development board to weigh in, and I would be I would be fine with removing the illumination requirement so that they can review it whether it is illuminated or not. Yeah, I would agree with that here, I think the intent when we first uh, try to modify the signage package was to give uh, finding what more uh, flexibility in approving mm -hmm. signs so that it wasn't such an uh, arduous uh, process of going through a whole planning board meeting for a simple sign that was very minor. 
and both parties agree with that. I mean, if it's just small, minor changes, we have all the faith that you guys will do the right thing, and you have. So I have no objections to this at all. Gene, uh, another thing, we should make whatever changes to the signage uh, article or bylaw that, that we that would empower maybe, uh, uh, Richard, you're correct, but they already does give her that authority. I don't know, but I would say, let's make that change to make it happen. Well, I think we would just basically <laughs> need, Excuse me. Bless you. We, we would need to rewrite Rule 18 of the Rules of Right, there's so we, many modifications that it would need. Right, that we would get rid of the modification altogether. Right. Basically, so signs on property signs. Um, they could, and we would get rid of number one to be, we wouldn't need them at all, and just say if the sign proposal doesn't meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw, then it needs to come to us. And then there's a sentence that's still there that I read in that says the department's not required to provide administrative approval, maybe from the fill application to the board, and then we can put in something like in Cal refer to the board, I don't know exactly, major sign or something, if you can think of exactly what it is for that, so we would not need any for that. But I think what here, um, again, that this, this, if we, if we push this, in terms of saying that the um, administrative approval by the Director of Planning and Development, or the signs are subject to administrative approval by the uh, Director of Planning and Community Development for signs that meet the zoning and general bylaw conditions, the department may, uh, you know, again, we, we can talk about how they may refer the sign to environmental design review. Under um, the bylaw, yeah, the bylaw, except for sort of house signs and things like that, would come to us. So I think the way to do this would just be to say, um, signs, I'm not sure exactly, the the home community development may approve signs if the following criteria are met. One, the sign meets zoning requirements. Two, there are no known zoning or general bylaw violations outstanding on the property. And then that's all we would need in that whole paragraph. Just two and three. Yeah, just two and three. Yeah. And then we'd redo the first little introductory sentence. And then we would tweak in the paragraph afterward with, with the sign proposal. And then we have the one that required, we would just put something else about the major and you know, these signs. Right. And that would be it. So instead of sign modifications, it would be new signs or sign modifications. Yeah. Right. Or have just sign applications. Sure. Well, we can, we can make, we can just say that before. So I'm I, I can remember that. Why don't we do that? And that just gives a little bit more work to the department, but I think overall it will be better for the business and everything else. So it might actually be less work in the long run if you're on processing sign applications for special permits when they're unnecessary. Do, do we? So should there be any fee for um, submitting for the sign that the department can approve? Do you know if the building department currently assesses a fee? They do already. They do? For a sign? For a sign permit. This is a review application. Right? Yes. Yeah. Let me ask Richard if he knows if there's a fee for a sign. I'm not prepared to answer that question, I think, right now this evening, but it's um, absolutely yes. Thank you for bringing that up. And I think it's something we should certainly look into. I would not make it equal to no, a special permit. No, no, no. Okay. 
Well, there is the procedure, and we can just leave the procedure in the five hundred and ninety, etc. That's probably what we need to do. Then. The last five in church, so that probably does it. Because that would be done whether or not there was an administrative approval. Great, so we will update that. Uh, <coughs> is that proposed wording uh, back for a final review future meeting? Yeah, I could just say, you know, we're going to amend the <coughs> move yards to this and the site plan review, so we should have to do that. Because we have to have a good Great. Great. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. I know it's clear. Um, I will turn it over to you to see if there are any other topics from uh, the board retreat that you wanted to follow up on today. Sure. Uh, thank you. I think um, one thing that we did not get to last night, but we should consider looking at very near future uh, or potential urban renewal areas. Um, and I think the the way that we can do that is I can have uh, the department um, you know, kind of look at a few suggestions um, in the areas that you know might might be uh, good um, for an urban renewal plan. Um, the first area that immediately uh, leaps to my mind is around the center, um, especially the division parcel. I think that it would qualify um, under you know, under state um, statute for uh, potential urban renewal. Um, plan and redevelop it. Um, I, I think that we should certainly um, look into doing one sooner rather than uh, later, um, just simply because the, I think so much the responsibility of the board and allows you to own the property, um, which is important. Um, but I do think uh, we do need to start brainstorming uh, certain areas uh, relative to where we can do uh, urban renewal. And, you know, I, I think that I'm Sorry, after a conversation yesterday, that I wasn't having maps or you know um, thoughts uh, you know, initially right now about where we may want to uh, do uh, you know, do a plan like that. We could even do we do a one parcel uh, potentially for the new plan. Um, that's that is something to be considered as well. We do it from common lot or um, you know really anywhere else. I think that we can even ten park out is uh, something that could be. Uh, Area that could be where your renewal could be applicable. Um, so I, I think what I would like to do is at our, our next meeting um, on the 18th is um, propose for new um, areas that we, uh, we could look at and do some research, um, check for you know, the underutilized parcels that are not necessarily being built out um, to turn you know, the full term of the zoning. Um, you know, I know that we've talked, you know, potentially about Durham Street um, in the past, um, but certainly I think that should be a good part of our mind. Great. Okay. Okay. I certainly uh, be open to a volunteer to help Ooh. sit in on the meeting with you guys when you guys first do this, and I will be very interested in that. Uh, it's, I do have a little history in just looking at properties and turning it over quick and blast. <laughs> as far as if it's a viable or not viable. Uh, and I've been looking at some of these properties for quite some time now. Uh, just there's a spark, you know. Just, uh, that's okay, is one, it's more than two or is one okay? Two, so. or two is fine, three is not. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that at least. Okay, so just let me know and uh, I will try to uh, make uh, some time available. Uh, I know it's the holidays and Christmas and all that stuff, but I will try my best. Okay, great, great. Thank you again. Uh, Shane, do um, What is, uh, where is Dudley Street? Excuse me, I totally got that wrong. Dudley Street oh. is what I meant to say. <laughs> my apologies. I think my mind that makes more sense now. That makes yeah. more sense. All right. No, okay, Gene? No, good idea. I think we should uh, look at the things you mentioned. I couldn't mention uh, the other day the Russell Common Law and the 
Discussion to about the mass architectural access board and deal with that. And, and I've told the, the language, which I guess I'm just aware of, I just read it before, that I suggested be a general condition for a special permit to be all of these, which is not in the general condition, but I think should be. And we could do similar, put a similar, not identical provision in the site plan approval when we start doing that. And all it would say attributed to the general conditions is special permit environmental design review approval is conditioned upon compliance with the conditions set forth in the amendment. And then the other forms of relief granted with the state building code and are applicable with the mass architectural access to the regulation. That's the exact language that's in the zone of value. I mean, my feeling is people get the approval, they never go back. Right. And look, so it does this down. So this should be a pretty Yes. I know, you know, if things don't get into templates, then they're in templates. So yep. That's my suggestion. Okay, so include it in the decision language. That makes a lot of sense. It's maybe the first for the general condition. Before the trash removal. So. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's a high <laughs> Much more important. <laughs> Do we need to hold a hearing to make that change? No, no. no dire, dire thing. It's ours. Okay, great. Right. Anything else? Okay. No. Gina? 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 All right. Let's close uh, agenda item number three. Uh, moving on, we don't have anyone joining us this evening, so we will move on from agenda item number four. To agenda item number five, new business, Claire. Sure, so um, my uh, great piece of new business good news um, this week is that we have, um, uh, someone has accepted uh, the assistant manager position and is working through the process of uh, background check right now and uh, has said that she is interested in starting the students next week. So um, wow. definitely, um, you know, uh, pending uh, the, the background check, we do have a new assistant director um, 
Yes. 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 Yes.